Hello, sportsmen. Last week, we covered some of the instructional aspects of waterfowl hunting, and now it's time to go. We're going to hunt ducks at the beginning of the season on Walpole Island, which is on the Canadian side of Lake St. Clair. We do quite well. But first, I'll take you on a goose hunt during the special early season in southern Michigan. Oh, what an experience. You stay tuned. I'm Fred Trost with some practical approaches to waterfowl hunting. Canada geese, that's one wildlife species that a number of urban dwellers feel have overpopulated and turned into a problem around urban lakes and ponds. That's why Michigan and some other states hold early goose seasons in September, where hunters are allowed, well, in fact, they're encouraged to remove some of these resident nuisance geese from the landscape. So hunters pay for their permits, invest in decoys and calls and camouflage clothing and steel shot and goose guns and portable blinds. And some even pay landowners a lease fee for access to areas where geese congregate. It takes stealth to lure geese into shooting range, even if geese are used to people by feeding and resting around lawns and golf courses. So hunters set out decoys. We know the birds are working the field pretty good. They're basically coming directly over that tree line and just wings cup dropping in the field. Our problem is we don't have a lot of cover to work from to shoot out of. So what we're going to try and do is kind of guide the birds into where we want them, to where we can shoot them. So what we're trying to do is set up a couple little family units down here, kind of flow the birds into where, where we're going to be in gunning range for them. So what we're going to do is kind of create a little, oh, a little U pattern, kind of, kind of guide them in once they come over the trees down in and right into the pocket where we're going to be sitting and waiting for them. Great. So uh, hopefully, cross our fingers. This is Todd Aloffs. He won the title as Michigan's goose calling champion. Todd loves to hunt ducks and geese. So does Scott Sturm. He spends many days waterfowl hunting each fall. There's Jack Wilson, master caller, call maker, and all-around character who's becoming a legend in his own time. Then there's me and my gun and John Ford and his camera trying to capture the elements of goose hunting so we can show you what this activity is all about. There were several other people in our goose hunting party. You'll see them in a little bit. We were crouched in the weeds along the edge of an alfalfa field, strung out about 15 or 20 feet apart, the geese, believe me, they couldn't see us. <laughs> Come on around. Unfortunately, my goose call was closest to the microphone, and I, I don't mean to run myself down, but I was in the company of some expert championship callers. They make their flute calls sing like a gaggle of geese. Sometimes my call sounded more like a gagging goose, but in all the noise and hubbub that geese make, my call fit in, but the geese weren't responsive. A very sad moment in goose hunting. <laughs> well... Scott over here said that was round one. That's just, a, that's, yeah. just, just round one? Yeah. Scott Sturm and his buddy Scott, who lives nearby, said more geese would come. Yeah, there's oh, there's, three. Yeah, three of them. Well, oh, they're right. They're going to pop out right behind it. They're, oh, no, there's more than that. But I think, unfortunately, they're going the wrong way. And ducks crossing over that way. Yeah, that'd be pretty tough to call them in. I tell you, these are the hardest working goose callers you'll ever find. <laughs> the decoys were as good as you'll find. The calling was as good as it gets, but the problem was these geese had other destinations in mind. Now, most of us in this hunting party had never hunted together before. We were a network of somebody who knows somebody who knows a landowner. So, hey, bring your buddy, I'll bring mine, and we'll make a TV show. Right city, wrong road. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The problem with a group of hunters who haven't hunted together before is that everybody wants to be courteous. 
These geese were setting their wings in range over Jack and Todd, but nobody shot. Why not? Because oftentimes the geese will circle around and fly over again, even lower. After the first shot, all the geese in the area will flare away, so each of us was hesitant to be the first hunter to spook the geese. Way up ahead, Mr. Freddy. Oh, yeah. All of these geese were in range, and the ones coming in will be 25 yards overhead. Oh, golly. Oh, golly. I want to in the worst way. Six hunters, geese overhead, nobody shot. That's why we went hunting. Time to talk. 20, 25 yards so what's easily. the deal? I had my safety off. I'm right. I was ready. I had. Who was clogging this work. up? Somebody is going to have to be in charge. Now Somebody. Jack said, I'll, "Wait till they land." Uh, yeah, but if they go See, I don't. Them, that land. goes against my ethics. Okay, how do you know they're not going to make a turn? They're not you're gonna turn. you're trying, trying to get out of this. Then the why geese, didn't you shoot? The geese. Well, because I'm working on those three geese. Oh. When, when you the see geese. me stand up and you see that first goose drop, everybody else stand up and start shooting. I was gonna, I was gonna stay seated and shoot. You see the white the geese, for some yeah, reason, I, don't want to light in the field. Yeah. The next geese that come over here, that yeah, close. they would have lit. They would have. You see this yeah. one right here? Who's, 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 who's something first. Uh, oh, I saw. I was, I was on him. I had my gun up. I was just waiting. Fred, I didn't see him. I heard someone say there they are. Yeah. I couldn't see. You're, you're the. Yeah, but. Here I'm here with the guy who, who has the contact for the land and, and the guy who has the geese wired and the and the goose calling champ and the ex goose calling well, champ and, and the guy who makes the decoy uh, wings. And who am I to shoot first? Brad Trost. Oh, yeah, yeah. Boy, I just knew. I just knew one shot, one shot, and there would have been, don't shoot. What are you doing? You know, we got to work both sides. Okay, well, from now on, you guys are hunting say, together. It's, it's I'm easy. hunting by myself right here. It's easy to say until you, yeah, until, <laughs> until you shoot and, you know, they yell at you. You so. know what this proves? I'll, I'll, take, you know what I'll proves? take the brunt of it next time. What it proves is we are all perfect gentlemen. Yeah, exactly. Hey. Fools, it's, but perfect gentlemen. Hey. Well, this experience wasn't all bad. If somebody had shot at the first group of geese, we would have been convinced that Todd and Jack could have called them in closer and probably brought in more geese with them. By not shooting, we got the ultimate in anticipation, the ultimate in goose-calling expertise. Oh, we didn't kill, but that's okay. We hunted, and no matter what anybody says, that's the fun part. Right ahead, right ahead, right ahead. Go ahead, Dick. Dick, go ahead. That was Alice. There you go. Oh, yes. The sky was unusually dark at daybreak. Lightning and thunderstorms had moved across Lake St. Clair a few hours earlier. Maybe that's why we didn't have a lot of action at first light. When the sun began breaking through the low-lying clouds, small groups of ducks began filtering across the marsh. Right in front of you, Freddy. Right. Jesus. Second shot. Oh, I had a decent start on the day. Two shots, one duck. Not bad. Alice, could you send Ben right straight out there? We got one right down. What? Oh, we got more coming here. Another group of ducks came winging in while Ben, the Steiner's Championship Labrador Retriever, was hunting up the bird that I had downed. He brought it back, and we heard lots of shooting a couple hundred yards away. I don't know why, when you're duck hunting in a marsh, it always sounds better somewhere else. Somebody was getting a lot of shooting. This was my first Canadian duck. In all the years I've hunted ducks in Michigan, I've never crossed over to Canada for waterfowl hunting until this year. 
September ducks can be a little tougher to identify because the young ducks of the year aren't always fully feathered and older birds may not be completely done with their molt. From the wide bill, though, it was easy to see that this was a shoveler. Bob Steiner is the guy who got us to try this Canadian duck season. The date was September 26th, the second day of the season on Walpole Island. In 1994, it opened two weeks earlier than Michigan's season, and the limits are six birds rather than three. You can use lead shot rather than steel on Walpole. All right. Is that you, Bob? Good shot. Yep, right over there. Everybody told us that compared to opening day, this was really slow. Our hunting party of four had gotten a few ducks in the morning, but one of our Indian guides, Al Sands, suggested the two of us move 100 yards or so to a different opening in the marsh. He said it looked like the ducks were dropping in over there. So we set out a small spread of mallard decoys, about a dozen or so. You don't need a lot of decoys when you're hunting puddle ducks in marshes like this. The big spreads of decoys are used in, in more open water later in the season when the diving ducks migrate through. A few decoys, a small aluminum boat painted to match the vegetation, that's all you need. Shove it up into the reeds so you're camouflaged and you can hunt right from the boat. No, you can stand in the shallow water with your waders, but after a few hours, that can get tiring. Hunting from a boat is nice. On this day, the ducks were not traveling in big flocks, which isn't all bad. Oftentimes, the singles are easy to lure in. They respond well to decoys and to calls. Safety off. Oh, yes. Oh, great. Before I could shoot, the duck landed on the outside of the decoys. Now, duck hunting protocol says it isn't sportsmanlike to ground swat ducks, which means shooting them while they're sitting on the water. So I tried to flush it with my call. My calling didn't scare it, surprisingly. So I stood up and yelled. Hey, duck. Duck. Quack. Well, <clears throat> did you enjoy that, Al? <laughs> Quite a performance. Did you get that? No. <laughs> what do you mean, get that? I'm afraid he got it on tape, but I'm afraid. I, that's what I thought. <laughs> well, I never touched that duck, but that's hunting. Lead shot is legal here, and I seriously questioned whether sticking to steel was a wise decision, but number two steel brought ducks down. Yes, yes, yes. There, last shot. Okay, in the water there, though. Well, I'm going to have to go out and get that. Why don't I, I'll just jump out and go. Well, that duck didn't go down hard, and it landed in thick cover. Bad place to drop it, but I chased it right away. <laughs> it's not easy. I'll tell you what, I don't intend to do this very often. <laughs> That's a fact. Oh, man. No, there's no point in shooting them back in the weeds. No, this is not something I want to do. That's a immature mallard. A little green on the head. Good eating. But at my age, I prefer to shoot him right out there. <laughs> Fortunately, John Ford spares you the spectacle of me trying to throw my tired legs over the gunnel of the boat. <laughs> this is what practical duck hunters use to retrieve their ducks. A bona fide seeing, sniffing, and listening retriever. This has been a hunting retriever club champion owned and trained by Bob and Alice Steiner of Marshland Kennels. The cove they were hunting is where we started at daybreak, and by sunset, 
ducks began drifting into this section of the marsh, so Dick Archer, John Ford, Guide Al Sands, and I also drifted back to join them. We really wanted to be near that retriever at this stage of the game. Oh, right over. Steiner dropped that duck, but I think the thing she really enjoys most about this whole duck hunting deal is the dog work. She's spent many hours training retrievers, young and old, but Ben is the pride and joy of Bob and Alice. A good retriever watches the sky, eyeballs the ducks, and when one falls, he marks the spot, but a well-trained retriever won't leave the boat until he's released. And if he loses his bearings out on the water, he looks back at his trainer for hand signals. Oh, a good retriever is a real asset to a waterfowl hunter. And this is why Ben earns special treatment when he gets home. Duck hunting isn't easy. Even seeing the ducks can be tough. Now, how many are flying in front of us now? Well, it looks like, what, five? Okay, now keep your head down so they don't see us. Oops! Should have seen that four coming from behind us, straight overhead. Well, our guides Al Sands and Tom Tushkinig were both excellent callers. And by day's end, even my shooting had improved. Guess who? Guess who? Huh? <laughs> At last I redeemed myself. Oh, boy. Walpole Island is Indian territory on the Canadian side of Lake St. Clair. Ontario regulations govern waterfowl hunting, but the rules aren't quite as rigid as we have here in the States. Hunters have to be accompanied by an Indian guide to hunt Walpole. Most will provide decoys, but you should bring your own boat and a retriever if you have one. A good dog is nice to have unless every duck drops in front of you, which isn't likely. There we go. Oh, boy. <laughs> Whoa. There goes Finn after, right there. Now, that's as close as an encounter as you can get. The night before the hunt, we bedded down at the Oaks Inn in Wallaceburg, Ontario, favorite meeting place for duck hunters. We spent a total of 16 hours in the marsh from launch to landing. Now, we weren't awake the whole time. It was a long day, but we did manage to get 22 ducks out of a possible 24. Now, we'll return to Walpole in early November. They say the ducks come in by the thousands, just like the good old days. Oh, what a treat for a duck hunter. I can't believe how gullible sportsmen are when it comes to how our hunting and fishing license monies are being spent. Now, there was a study done this past spring uh, by some organizations that are chummy with the DNR. You know, they do a lot of business with the DNR. Their survey concluded that the DNR was spending sportsmen's license fees in exactly the proper way. Such a surprise. Then we find articles like this one from the Detroit News. It talks about how our DNR wildlife biologists got special permission from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to allow people who were bothered by southern Michigan geese to shake the eggs of Canada geese so the embryos would be killed and the eggs wouldn't hatch. Now this is supposed to be a solution to the Canada goose population problem. But there's something very wrong with this picture. I mean, for one thing, geese are supposed to be highly regulated and controlled and protected migratory birds. Extreme regulations, protecting wetlands have been instituted so creatures like geese can flourish. And our government has developed a litany of really nightmarish and complex waterfowl hunting regulations that we hunters have to follow to a T or else face huge fines. Now, you or I would be fined thousands of dollars if we were caught tampering with nests, let alone squashing baby ducks or geese, or even killing one nuisance goose out of season. 
But the article here says that environmentalists say shaking the nests is better than hunting. Hey, hold the phone. As I recall, it's been hunter's money that has funded law enforcement, habitat restoration, and efforts to encourage higher goose populations. The idea is that waterfowl hunters who pay for a Michigan small game license, a Michigan waterfowl stamp, and a $15 federal waterfowl stamp are supposed to be able to harvest surplus geese for their own consumption. But now we find that environmentalists who don't pay a darn thing are now shaking eggs to clean up the environment. They're killing future geese that we've paid to propagate, and our DNR is helping them. Now, next spring, when the government takes their surveys to find out how many eggs the environmentalists can shake, you know where the money's going to come from to pay for that survey? You guessed it, from hunters. Non-hunters say they're tired of having their lawns and golf courses covered with unsightly goose poop. Well, I don't know about you, but I've had it just about up to here with this crap myself. That's my opinion. Well, this show was about waterfowl hunting. Future programs will be on upland bird hunting, rabbits, turkeys, and of course, a lot on deer. In the meantime, don't let this beautiful fall weather slip by. Get outdoors whenever you can. It's a great place to be. See you next week. Uh, Branch County, the 23rd of October with a Darton 60 pounder. Now let's get to the cool part of this story. This is a 12 point with an 18 inch spread. The cool part of the story is that you had that 60 pounder drawn back on a 10 point. That's correct. Um, I guess I owe a, owe a vote of thanks to uh, Starlight Archery for helping me with my uh, archery skills and my brother for being persistent and having me go out the night before and set up a tree stand. Um, I got out there in about uh, 8.30 in the morning. I seen a doe come through and she kept looking back over her shoulder so I thought, uh, there's got to be something else back there. And um, a few minutes later, a 10-point came out. I watched the 10-point come across, and the doe went in front of me. And they were about 17, 18 yards out in front of me. And I drew on the 10-point, and uh, I was about to release. And I seen a movement out of the left corner of my eye. And uh, I seen this, this one here walk in. So I released. I let, let the bow back down. I let the doe and the 10-point go through. And this one came in, and um, he turned broadside in front of me and was quartering away. And um, I let go and hmm. put it through both lungs. He went about 50 yards and dropped. I watched the whole thing from the tree stand. Wow, you're lucky so, that thing didn't turn around and go the other way or wander yeah, off. You've never uh, had that happen, huh? Well, I've, I've teased my brother a lot of times. He's, he's actually a better bow hunter than I am, and he's gotten a lot more deer. And I told him, I said, I'll never let a small deer go or a, or a one with a rack, you know. And... Uh, uh, when this one came in, I, I, when the 10-point came in, I thought, what am I doing? I'm going to mess around. I'm going to lose them both. Mm -hmm. But uh, when I seen this one coming, I thought, well, uh, I'm going to take, take a chance and let that one go, and hopefully he'll come through. And they didn't know mm -hmm. I was there. So, Very so good. I was lucky and, and got one. You were lucky and <laughs> got a great buck right there, and that yep. is a 12-point. Yep. Congratulations Thank on you, that. Fred. Larry Messenger.